So, okay. All right, so we're going to get started in just a couple of, couple of minutes. Well, this is your official good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? While we are waiting for the sun to rise, we're gonna we're gonna raise a hallelujah here, okay? So I'll, I'll try not to wake up the whole neighborhood here, but who knows when you're raising a hallelujah, right? Sing a little louder, my weapon. 
Japanese melody singing louder, singing louder. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. Gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is. Please join me in the call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Death is defeated. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hope is here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed, and that's why our God is mighty to save. Everyone needs compassion, I can love never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save.
Jesus, we gather in this beautiful place with the birds singing and the coolness of the morning touching our skin. We gather knowing that you have risen, but they didn't know that that first morning. That first morning, they thought you were still dead. That first morning, they thought there was no hope. They were wondering in the midst of the shadows. They were wondering. And we're so glad that you take us as you find us whether we are embracing the truth of your resurrection or maybe we're still wandering in the shadows. We're so thankful that you meet us where we are, that you make the first move, that you understand our joy and our pain. And so we open ourselves to you. We open ourselves to the honesty of this moment, knowing you welcome that. And so I invite you to open your hands and say, take me as you find me. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for grace and goodness. I invite you to offer your own prayers that you've brought with you this morning. With open hands and open hearts, Jesus, we ask you to help us to receive the hope that is there every single day, new every morning. We ask that you would help us to live the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter. Uh, and good morning to all of you that are joining us live on Facebook or are watching the the replay. Uh, you may be wondering, we've got this beautiful garden sitting next to us, why are we not in the garden this morning? Um, you can't see the sunrise in the garden, and so you can see the sunrise here. That's why we're, that's why we're over this direction this morning. But you are always welcome to come and uh, spend time in the garden, including after the service. So I, I would encourage you to do that. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we want to make sure, those of you that have gathered here live, uh, that you have gotten uh, your cracker and your grape juice. Everybody okay and have that. If you're uh, joining us from home, I would encourage you to get a cracker or a piece of bread, uh, some grape juice or some red wine. We're going to have communion in uh, just a few moments, and uh, you are welcome to join us. And uh, everybody is always welcome to participate in communion. And uh, so we want, we want you to be able to do that as well. 
Uh, it's okay if you only have the bread or the cracker, if you only have the grape juice or the wine. It's okay if you only have one. Two's great, one is plenty. Um, this morning, uh, we are going to read the story of the resurrection from the gospel according to John. This is probably the most well-known version of the Easter story, John chapter 20. We are going to read the first 20 verses, though, Uh, a little further than what's normally read on Easter morning. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. As for yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. There's an old, old joke. It's probably the only joke I know. And it's the one that I tell the most often because it's the only joke I know. So, three folks find themselves at the gates of heaven. And St. Peter says, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, Surprise, you get to bring one thing from earth with you into heaven. And so the first person walks up, and and St. Peter says, So, what have you brought? And the person says, I've brought my rosary. This has really taught me and helped me learn how to pray and to spend quiet time with God. Can I bring my rosary rosary in with me? And St. Peter says, Absolutely welcome. Come on in. The next person walks up, and St. Peter says, what have you brought with you? And the person says, I have brought my Bible. I have been teaching 
Bible for the past 50 years, I have questions written in the back of my Bible that I want to ask Jesus. Can I bring in my Bible? Absolutely. Welcome. Come on in. The third person walks up, and Peter says, what have you brought? And this person is a good Methodist. And uh, the person says, I have brought a covered dish to share. Right? We love to eat, right? I imagine on Easter morning, Jesus walks up to the gates of heaven. And uh, those who greet him say, what have you brought with you? And uh, Jesus says, look at all these that I have brought with me, all these folks. And Jesus says, I have brought my scars with me. I have brought my scars. Mary goes to the tomb early in the morning, early, you know, this time of day, she's heading to the tomb, and she heads back and says, I have seen the Lord. Can you imagine the conversation that goes on for the rest of the day? Can you imagine the debate and the questions and the wondering and the, oh, but I remember Jesus saying this, and oh, I remember, but oh, you know, and finally it's evening, and Jesus comes. He shows up, and what does he bring with him? He brings a word of peace, peace be with you, and he brings his scars. He shows them. He shows them. He shows them his hands. He shows them his side. I imagine he shows them his feet, where they have nailed his feet. I imagine they, he shows them where he was slapped, where they pulled his beard out. I imagine he shows them his back, where he was flogged. I imagine they show him, he shows them where the crown of thorns was. He shows them his scars, because his scars have a story our scars have stories too. Jesus's scars have stories. They have stories of sacrifice and torture and betrayal and mocking and denial, but they also have the story of grace, the story of hope, the story of victory, the story of love. Jesus shows them his scars, and his scars tell a story. And so this beautiful morning, what scars have you brought with you? What stories do they tell? I have a scar from where I had my appendix out, unexpectedly. I have stretch marks from having babies who are now adults. I have a um, pretty large scar from a hysterectomy. I have scars on the inside, too. Maybe you have scars on the inside as well. Scars from when uh, my classmates teased me in elementary school. Scars from... Um, some family stuff, scars of my own making, foolish things I have done. What scars have you brought with you this day? What story do they tell? And maybe your scars aren't scars yet, maybe they're wounds. Because there's a difference between a wound and a scab and a scar. Wounds are open. Wounds are still in need of healing. healing. And um, sometimes they're deeper than we can see. 
and sometimes we try to hide them, we try to cover them, we uh, medicate them, right? Sco wounds become scabs. Scabs uh, are in process of being healed, but they're not all the way yet. And have you, have you ever had a wound that, that seemed to be healing, but you had to open it up again because there was an infection? Had to debreed it, lance it, get out all the stuff. It's, it's still needing healing, still needing help. Maybe you've had maybe you've had a wound that's needed a skin graft. Something something brand new to put on top for there to be healing. Maybe your wound has become a scar. Because you've done the work, you've gone and gotten the help, you've gotten the counseling, you've gotten the medical help. Maybe it's a scar. Scars are stable. Scars are stable. And they have a story. A story that becomes a testimony. This is what happened. This is the healing that has taken place. Let me tell you my story. That's what Jesus was doing that first Easter. This is what happened, but this is the healing that has taken place. Let me tell you my story. That's the good news of Easter. The good news of Easter ties into uh, Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, our wrongdoings. He was punished, and that punishment brought us peace. It brought us wholeness. Salvation means wholeness. By his wounds, we are healed. That's the story of Easter. By his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, we are made whole. By his wounds, we are saved. So everybody has a story. I hope as part of your story, you've said yes to Jesus. Anybody can say yes. I still had lots and lots of wounds when I said yes. And over the years, those wounds have become scars and they have become stories. Stories of grace and hope. Stories of truth and love. Happy Easter, dear ones. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who would love him, all who would uh, earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. And so during this next song, I invite you to uh, say yes, to say yes again to the story and to Jesus. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne in endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit.
to reveal the kingdom coming, to reconcile that which was lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross, for even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation. Jesus forsake you down. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till the stone was moved a good, and the lamb had counted death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. And the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the spirit in the flame. Now the gospel of the old shall not need, shall not faint. For the love of this is For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Sing with us, praise the Father. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. welcome at the table, a table of resurrection and goodness. And so before we have a meal, we always say grace. And so praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his suffering, death, and resurrection gave birth to your church, who delivered us from slavery to sin and death and shame and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to all who were gathered there and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to all who were gathered there and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves. I invite you to put your hand over your heart, offer yourself. We offer ourselves in praise. We offer ourselves in thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of our faith that Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. I invite you to open your hands, pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ and make us one with each other and make us one in ministry to all people and grant us an enduring faith so that we may stay true until you come again or until you welcome us home to feast at the heavenly banquet. We ask this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. I invite you to The body of Christ broken for you.
the blood of Christ shed for you. All over the world today, brothers and sisters in faith are saying, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And so let's join them. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Again, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Amen. Let's stand for this uh, final song and please feel free to sing along. Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory, maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your word, king over all the universe, to you be the glory, and I'm alive because I'm alive in you. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ That covers me and raised this dead man's life It's all because of Jesus I'm alive of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory, maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your worth, king over all the universe, to you be the glory, and I'm alive because I'm alive in you, it is all Every sunrise sings your praise The universe draws out your praise I'm singing freedom all my days Now that I'm alive It's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ He covers me and raised this dead man's life because of Jesus, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive because of you. Um, friends, before you leave today, we've we've got we've got a little parting gift for you. And so uh, please, uh, please stop by over there and, and pick it up on your, on your way out. Uh, beloved of God, go now in peace. Go to love, go to serve. Go with the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter. <laughs>